feel a little bit like um, like Johnny Cash. You listen to this sort of, this sort of mic. Shine. You know I mean? Mate, that's Elton John's mic. Mm. Honestly, on the description. I, think, I mean, I think I'd rather be Johnny Cash than Elton John, honestly. But yeah. there you go. <laughs> Elton. El, um, Elton Capolo. No, the just not. Scottish singer. Let's not start that. <laughs> uh, I think I've got the mic. And, that's a bit close. I think Mike and Beard have become mixed. <laughs> Right, guys, welcome to episode two of the Lure Fishing Podcast. Uh, hopefully, you all enjoyed the first one. We're back again, so we must have uh, we must have been happy enough with the first one to do another one. It was fun. I think so. Yeah. I enjoyed it. We rambled on a bit, but... Um... I mean, that's in my nature. I do ramble. But I, think, I don't think it's a bad thing. It's natural. It's not scripted, as you can, anyone watching this can probably tell. It's a podcast, isn't it? Yeah. Got to ramble. I think it's, that's, that's what I enjoy listening to in podcasts myself, is... Genuine conversations. Yeah, you know, I, I like to feel like the conversation is the sort of conversation you can get into down the pub with your mates, you know? How often do you mention to your mates down the pub that you've just lost your virginity? <laughs> I wonder how long it takes for that to come back up. Um, Mate, you scarred me for life. Well, I mean, if anything, you scarred me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sleeping properly at night anymore. I lock every door in the house. I think, I think we Ban should... Ban Charlie from even arriving. <laughs> I think we should move away from virginity <laughs> as a subject, as a general... Oh. I don't want this to be a recurring thing. Um, I'm on all sorts of medication. Oh, God. <laughs> right, in, on the subject of recurring things, it's that time of year again. Rivers are closed and trout fishing is upon us. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about Zandercoles then. Phew. No, let's not get back onto that yet. Uh, I thought you were going to get off for one. Uh, no, no. Yeah, so tra- yeah. Trout fishing. Now, this is... I am intending to do a little bit of lure trout fishing. Yep. I have been known to chuck the fluff. Yes. And uh, I like doing a bit of trout fishing. Do you I wear mean, tweed? <laughs> yeah, a little flat cap. Yeah. I uh, only carry a floating line. Yeah, upstream only. Oh, yes. If you, if you, if you, if you cast a nymph, you'll scum. A nymph? Yeah. Oh. Dries dry. only. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do, I do a little bit. I, well, I tell you yeah. what happens normally. I normally get, I like buzzer fishing. Yep. Because I like lazy. that you hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I go yeah. two or three times. Yep. And then I just lose interest. On still waters? On still waters. Okay. Yeah, I just lose interest. So I like eating trout. Yeah. So I normally have 10 or 12. That'll do. Yeah. Take the fillets off. I like having them in the breadcrumbs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then I'm just, I've, that's my feel. But this year, I've never ever lure fished for trout. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd like to do a bit. Yeah. Because it's going to be completely new for me. Okay. So. On the rivers? Now this, I can't reach my phone. Well, I was good. Right. This is what confuses me. I did look. I did look, because on the still waters, they, this is where I get very confused. Yeah. So on the angling water still waters, mm-hmm. the trout fishing opened uh, beginning of March. Yeah. So I was talking to the twins, yes. Rob and Sam Lloyd, yep. about they want to take the trout fishing, which yep. is very kind of them, and yep. they're like, I ain't got a clue. And I was messaging them saying, what, we'll go? And they said, yeah, when it opens. Yes. And I'm thinking, why is it, so, why is it not open? Yeah. So it's different where you live in the country. For some people, it's already kicked off. For some people, it doesn't start till the 1st of April. Some people, it doesn't start till the 3rd of April. Uh, for me, being in Essex, being under the Anglian banner of the of the Environment Agency, I can't. At all. Until? Uh, June 16th. Can't fish for trout with lures at all within the, the close season. Now, this podcast will go out on the 4th of April. Yes. So... By that point, everyone who can will be allowed to. Okay, who can? So this is—it's so confusing, isn't it? I can I can fish fly from the first of April, I think. I can fish fly on the same river. On the same river. You can't lure fish. But I can't lure fish. Now I had the conversation with with I won't name him in case he's wrong, but my the local uh, or a, a, an EA bailiff, um, and I said to him that the bylaw says that, uh, that you can fish for them using flies. What the bylaw doesn't say is what you have to cast those flies with. Oh. So there's nothing stopping me from using an ultra light, almost LRF type setup with a split shot. LRF. Shot, LRF. Shot, LRF. LRF, yes. LRF, light rock fishing. Oh, right. Yeah. See, it's, I haven't. I can't even say BFS. <laughs> no, say BFS. or BFS. Or that, right. that, you know, that sort of. So what my hey, point is, yeah, is an ultra light. An ultra, ultra light, a UUL, or is it ultra, ultra, 
ultralight or extra ultralight, extra. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Letters. Um, so there's nothing stopping me, theoretically, from fishing for them with a conventional setup. I haven't got cast appliance with a fly rod. So that doesn't then, sound that, right to me. Well, I, I said that, and I said to him, if you caught me fishing, and I had, and you asked, and you said, "Excuse me, sir, it is the close season, you can't fish." And I said, "Sir, I'm fishing That's for trout." Right. Well, you have to be, don't you? Yeah. For Essex, we're all very polite. Uh, mate, I've played a lot of rugby <laughs> over the years, and the one thing I would say about any team from Essex. Yeah. I wouldn't be rude about people from Essex. I wouldn't. <laughs> you have them, yeah, you have them knocking down your door. Um, <laughs> Quite an you. But um, yes, so I would say, sir, I am I am targeting trout, and I am using flies. And his answer was, "You well, still nick, mate." <laughs> no, his answer was, "There's nothing you can do about it." Really? Yeah. Hmm. So I I haven't done it because I don't have time. But I'd be interested to know if anybody has. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone out there? In the, in the in the the land of beyond the camera. Lure trout fishing is very confusing. Yeah. Not the technique search. Where where and when you can go. Yeah. You have to find, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I think the responsibility has to be with the angler. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have to find out the correct time of year to go. Yeah. However, it would be a bit easier if there was um, a unified. Yeah, because I've looked on some of his websites and it got very confusing, and it seemed to change. I might have got this slightly wrong, but when I, when I looked, it seemed to change depending on what day that certain date fell on as well, mm-hmm. of each corresponding year. Right. So I, it was, I don't know, I was just, well, maybe it's me just getting completely misled. But uh, So I think it's a Thames region, so and that's not just the Thames, that's within the region that comes under the Thames bylaws. You can fish with worms. From when? From April. So there's lots of people who will be fishing for... Does the same group Spotty Perch cross over boundaries? Uh, good question. I don't know because there's so around my area. I think there's there's three different regional bylaws. So we have the the Thames bylaws, which is very close to me. Uh, the Anglian bylaws, which is where my where I live, comes under, and then there's another one which I believe is the Southern, right? Which is a bit of Kent and other places, so maybe. Sussex, I don't know, that sort of area, um, and they all got different rules. So I could, I could literally go from where I live, and I can't fish for trout until June on lures. I could do a thirty-minute drive across the Dartford Bridge, and fish for them on lures legally from April third. I could then drive from there to a bit of Thames, which isn't far, maybe another forty minutes, fish for them with worms, and each of those things I do would be illegal in the other places. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's hard, it's, it's easy to see how people come a cropper because it's very, it's, it's very confusing and it, unless you're all that way inclined to actually go and, and this is why a lot of people don't do it, I think, because they can't be asked. They don't want to go and do hours of research know when they can and can't and what they can't do and like some of them, the rule is spinners only. Oh. Or you can use a spinner. Now some people interpret that, the, the term spinner as lure, any lure. But I think it very much depends on who catches you. <laughs> if one EA bailiff says, yeah, I interpret it that way as well, then you'll probably get away with it. But if another EA bailiff says, actually, that it means literally spinner. If you're not using a spinner, then it's not okay. Somebody out there might have... I'd love if someone to, to just to put together a really, like a really easy to read, simple yeah. calendar. Yeah. And you can almost like correlate it, like... That you, this this coloured section here is when you're allowed to fish for lures in these regions. This coloured section here is allowed, when you're allowed to fish on fly in these regions. And, and it would be and, and which counties fall under each region, because that would make it so much simpler for everyone. It may exist. Yeah, it may well exist, and I'd love for someone to yeah. tell me it does. And if it doesn't, I'm sure there's someone out there who's more capable and has got more time than myself to actually do that. Well, I'd have thought this would be an, an environment agency issue. You'd think so. But the thing is, the, the, the thing that, that um, frustrates me about this is the Environment Agency have these bylaws that have been in place since time begun. And if you actually speak to anyone within the Environment Agency and ask why, because, that's be- just because they are. I think it's, it stems from when you bought your regional licence. Mm-hmm. There's a regional bylaw. That, yeah. That, and, that was, and then it got, the EA took over the, well, the, the Environment Agency was the umbrella organisation for yeah. all of them. 
So you put end up buying one, but those individual vinyls. Still but exist. but what I mean is like so, why is it? Why here is it okay for me to catch? Oh right, yeah. And why? And they go, well, that's just because that's the law. But that's, that's not okay. That's it's, not... it's what we talked about last week with the Zander Co. Why are they killing yeah. Zander in one part of the country? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Not, not that we want them to come no, at no, all, but no. yeah, there's a discrepancy which doesn't make any disparity sense. Disparity is, is the word, and I hate that. I hate disparity. I like fair things. Yeah. I like things to be very fair for everyone, and I don't feel like... And I feel like there should be an open conversation about it. You should yeah. be able to ask why, without the EA going, just because, do it because we told you. Yeah. And there should be... A, a, but the, the trouble is... Uh, this is again. You no, know, we've we've mentioned this before about how there's tribalism within fishing and how we need to have one unified voice. And our unified voice is meant to be the Anglian Trust, right? Which and for for the, the everything they do, that they do a lot of good things for for fishing. Um, but even within the Anglian Trust, there's people that not within the but people who support the Anglian Trust would want different things. So it's very hard to get everyone together and go. This is our target, our goal, and this is what we're aiming for. Because nobody wants, not everyone wants the same thing. We didn't want to get onto political issues. And no. Stuff like this. However, you've broached them. The Anglian Trust has been described to me as a membership organisation. Yeah. Whereby, uh, if you're a member, you can ask them to do things. Yes. To me, it should Are be, you a member? No, because it should be the other way around. The Anglian Trust wants to be the national governing body for fishing. Yeah. Therefore, it shouldn't tag itself onto existing schemes. In my opinion, it should just deal with. These are the major priorities in my head. Mm -hmm. Youngsters. The mm -hmm. grassroots of the sport. That's where it's just got to have a big focus. Because in 20 years' time, where are we going? Yeah. Um, they focus a lot on the, the top events. They kind of blackmail the match angles. They have to join to be, to enter these matches. I think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. To me, a pound of our rod licence money should go to the Anglian Trust. So everyone who's got a rod licence becomes a member. It makes it a very powerful organisation because it has nearly a million members. Yeah. has a million quid in subscriptions. They do it with this £28, I think it is, to join. There was, at the beginning of the lockdown, there was only 13,000 members. It's mm -hmm. not a very strong, powerful organisation when you have that few members. I think the the issue is, is communication as well. The, the communication is yeah. not fantastic. They yeah. don't... And so... Um, we, can oh, pick, we can pick holes in everything. Exactly. It's not fair to have a go. No. However... Because they've done, to, in my opinion, and it is only my opinion, they've done some great things, especially recently for, for England. Like, yeah, um, but it's just... Again, it's one of those clouded things, isn't it? How can we're talking about it? Yeah. It should be transparent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it should be there representing anglers, not yeah. just its members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. So it's one of those weird ones. You kind of go, well, you, I won't join you until you start representing anglers. Mm -hmm. And then some more counter the argument. I've got some friends who are members who get their counter it. I remember. Say, they I say remember. to me, well, you should join to say this. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. I'll join when I see them doing it. I, 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 I totally appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. And, and I was of the same thinking for a long time. It was only when, um, at the beginning of... So I've actually had a conversation with Jamie, the CEO. Yeah. Um, I've, I've spoken to him about it. And uh, I was very honest. I was never a member. Uh, and at the beginning of the lockdowns, when they fought for us to get out of England again, I joined up. Because I was like, I'm still doing something good. I was like, I'll support that. I'll support you doing yeah, interesting. that. Interesting. That was your... So on the other podcast that I do, yeah. we had Jamie Cook on. Yeah. Just he was new into the role, and no one will know this because I never mentioned this. But I think he's a fantastic guy. Mm -hmm. I had lots of phone calls with him before we recorded, because he was new into the role. He wanted to get it right. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to know what questions I was going to ask him, because there's no way on God's earth he would have known all the answers. So no. he went off to get all the answers. He's a very hard working and man. And then yeah, he is incredibly hard working. And then. Covid happened, just as we were about to record, which he was completely stuck on that. Yeah. So it became. I've got a lot of respect for him yeah. because I actually, when you see someone like that, and he still wanted to do the podcast, and I thought that was great. I got one big problem about the stuff they did in lockdown mm -hmm. and the environment agency, which bugs me. And we had a massive problem out here. Go on. How did no one see that they could? Nobody thought to tell people it was still the close season. Right. Yeah. And they, they were so proud of getting fishing back on the agenda, and it was mid-May. Yeah. And it was, round here was mayhem. I didn't really see it, so... The number of incidents we had about season fishing... Oh, really? ...was hundreds. Oh, really? And the Environment Agency were told by DEFRA not to attend any... Yeah. ...because of health COVID, and safety. Yeah. So we had all, all the locals were going out, checking everywhere. So... That mismanagement, that lack of foresight, yeah. has provo provoked in the. I'm not saying I presume other people as well. We just go, 
can't get that right. Yeah, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. I can understand the frustration. I think the issue it was... It may have, mate. There was hundreds of incidents. We we was in uncharted territory. And yeah, we had we almost had this conversation with politics and politicians last night as everyone well. Everyone knows June the 16th to begin the season. Yeah. They could have said, you're allowed to go fishing, but only on... They didn't. Mm-hmm. It was like, look at what you've done. We've opened yeah, up yeah, fishing. Yeah. You can go fishing. If you go back and look at all the publicity, no one mentioned about the close season. Yeah. And it, honestly, it was we have enough problems around here with illegal fishing as it is. Yeah, it I bet. was mayhem. Right. And there, I've got some brilliant incidents where there were six guys. I won't say what nationality were there or anything, but we found fishing in the middle of May on the Little Ooze. They had to drive to it. Bear in mind, you couldn't. Yeah, leave. you couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was out of season, and they were in groups of six. Right. They were camping over the weekend. No one would go from official capacity to sort it out, so the locals went and sorted it. Yeah. And it, this is where it all kicked off, really. Yeah, Because yeah. everyone had enough. Some of the guys went back two or three weeks later, so they got, not physically sorted out, but kicked off again. But again, things weren't being dealt with at the right level. Yeah. And that's just one incident. So, yeah, look, I, because I'm involved in lots of things locally, I get to hear about lots of things, and yeah. you go, oh, God, that could have been avoided so easily if... Mm-hmm. A bit of thought for that. Just to mention, it was the close season. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah. so there's, I think, I think, the, I think the good thing, especially with Jamie, is he'd admit if he cocked up. And I think, oh, listen, I think yeah. nowadays, especially the people within the trust, they're much better at recognizing their mistakes than they have been in the past. I think that's good. I think if you just say to Jamie, go fair enough. I think I do think he would like. Listen, I got the utmost respect for him yeah. because I had first hand experience of working with him. He's brilliant, mm-hmm. but that. Was just a balls up. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The close season date doesn't change. Have you ever? Have you <laughs> ever? Um, unless in, you're trout fishing, but trout whether fishing. You, depending yeah. on which region you're yeah. in. Have you ever encountered the a bailiff whilst fishing? Have you been a license checked? A uh, fisheries enforcement officer. Okay, that's the crypto. Yeah, we have a guy called Alex Thompson around here. He's brilliant. Right, but we have one. Yeah, same for Essex. We have one. Yeah, but he does Essex and some of Suffolk as well. Yeah, we have the great news catchment. There were two. Yeah. Uh, one's. Off long term sick, I'm led to believe. Yeah. Alex is brilliant because I run the Fenland Guardian scheme. Yeah. And we have 70, not 70 guardians on the waterways we look at. We've, I print, I had printed off 3,000 flyers and business cards. So it's three, that's 6,000, 3,000 of each. They go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And these work, these guardians have been brilliant. They're not fishermen, they're fishermen, dog walkers, members of the general public. That's it's a brilliant a idea. Scheme, that's a brilliant and idea. And they, they, we've nearly run out. Really? Now yeah. this year, People would have seen on the Fender and Guardian scheme Facebook that there's nothing. I haven't put anything up. Because my opinion is, if I've got nothing to say, that's good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this that scheme started from the release of everybody out of lockdown. Right. It, that's why you can see I'm a bit... Because yeah. it, was, it was mayhem. Personal, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just that people were having to put themselves at risk yep. to solve problems caused by other people. Yeah. And um, and the community we have around here is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And it was, we did litter picks as well. Yeah. And we had families helping. Uh, didn't know them at all. We had eleven different waterways over sixty people. This is this is just the people that gave me photographs. Mm-hmm. There was probably hundreds. Mm-hmm. And because we shared it all locally on on Facebook, um, one weekend it was back end of March two two years ago. You should have seen the photographs I got sent. It was really? amazing. The goodwill out there is brilliant. And we just went and picked up litter all over the place. Brilliant. And it also gave families something to do again. Yeah, yeah, family, yeah, yeah. During what was a very stressful time. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in the, you know, you, I haven't even spoken to you about this. You won't know about the stuff that I did with that. No, no, no. I don't no. want to talk about it on here because it's lure fishing. But, yeah, so, people, there's so many things going on. Yeah. And... Going back to what I was saying, these big organisations, I do have some sympathy, but when things are set like the close season, and when they try and big themselves up, look what we did for the sport, and I go, did it help? Mm. Mm. Now, I'm not, they put a lot of time and effort in working with the sports minister yep. and Sport England. Yeah. And that's when really the Anglican Trust became um, sort of, um, it got its national governing body kind of notified because it was representing angling. So all that was brilliant. Mm hmm. But you've got to get it simple things right. I know you mean. Yeah. yeah. So releasing people to go fishing again was great on the still waters and where the close season didn't exist. Yeah. But we live in a society where people need to be told exactly what Yeah, you to have to do. lay out. If yeah. you give them any um, room for manoeuvre... Grey areas. Some people will make an honest mistake. Yeah. We found one guy, he was on the 16 foot. 
drain was down here. Yeah. Walking down the road with his fishing gear, English guy pulled over and stopped and said, What are you doing, mate? He goes, I'm going fishing. I said, You can't. He said, It's close season. He said, Oh, no, we've been told. Look, we can all go fishing. I said, I oh, know, they haven't explained it. And he was mortified. He went, oh, I haven't been for years. I only wanted to have it. I said, I'm sorry. He went, No, I got it now. So he had he was <laughs> to turn around and walk back home. Yeah. It wasn't his it, no, it was his fault. He should have known. It's down to the individual. However, yeah. And this is the problem we've got with society. A lot of people will make a genuine mistake. Yeah. Some people, which is what the problem we had around here, will use it as an excuse. As an excuse. Yeah. 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 So you have to be really kind of big. Or, you can't. You can't win as a big organisation. No, Someone's no. going to have a go at you. No. Normally me, but. No, but yeah, so that's what that happened there. Yeah. So how did we get on that? We were talking about trout fishing. <laughs> trout fishing. Should we bring it back? What, I was going to bring a couple of rods that I use for BFS. Yep. I'm not going to forget that now. And could I ask you, because I don't know anything about trout fishing, and you said to the bait casters, what did you say? So, and it's something I re- regurgitated because I heard it, I thought it was funny. It was bait casters for show, spinning reels for pros. Now... There is a certain element of truth to that for me personally. There's, there's, there's certain people out there who will argue this point to the, to the death um, and they've got valid points. But for me, if I'm, if I'm fishing for trout and I'm wading and I've got limited amount of use of my appendages, what I don't really <laughs> do... You're using a floating line. I'm just so using a floating line and, then, and, and a mayfly <laughs> and, 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 and tweed. And, but, but so um, my point is what I don't want to be doing is picking bloody overruns out of my reels yeah. and I'm and I'm not very good with a bait caster and that's really probably the reality of it so what I'd rather do is actually maximise my fishing time and use a spinning reel because I find myself for me more accurate okay, I can I can fish it <coughs> how I you know how I like to fish and not end up with loads of mistakes well, you're not thinking about casting you're thinking about I'm thinking about yeah. fish yeah I get that because um, it's interesting you say that because I did I dabbled with this BFS and the first thing I had to try and get on top of was the casting. Yeah. Now, I've been using bait casters with my big wolf creek lures for years, and I can mm-hmm. cast prodigious distances with it, because you can, because it's heavy. Yeah. We're talking 100-pound braid. You're whacking out big, heavy baits, mm-hmm. even into the wind. So it's it's relatively easy. Doing this, I was going, I was getting frustrated. I was yeah. sticking stuff in the tree yeah. and getting overruns. I was it, doing the old pitching thingy, what you yeah. call it. He was shooting over there, and I was going, this yeah. is ridiculous. I actually think that there's there's a... It goes like in like stages, so you have like a certain uh, casting weight where that BFS thing suits it really well, and I think that's sort of like maybe three to seven grams. Yeah, but I think that wouldn't be called BF. Well, be I know, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But I think if you're going really, really so ultra, you're going to get some guys go. Yeah, well, yeah. That, Scots- that Scotsman does not know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oi, <laughs> oi, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and I probably don't. But, but my, in my mind, in, in my own personal experience, I find that that, that sort of my BFS setup performs, and it's probably because I haven't got the, the right gear, but I'm not that into it, so I'm not going to buy, spend lots of money on it. Um, sort of three to seven grams. Because yeah. the thing is, people go, well, I've got a two gram jig head on, that's two grams, it's not. It's two weight. grams plus your plus your plastic, yeah. you know, whatever you've got in the jig head. So you're probably talking five grams. Yeah. So anyway, and anything less than that, if, and if so some of my canal fishing, I fish ultra light, what, you know, half gram jig heads and things like that, if I'm wasping and fishing these like, um, comps and things like that, then I will pick a spinning reel every single time because it's easier. And I'm really, really, really lazy. <laughs> and I don't want to mess about. I want to catch fish. I'm go- I go fish- fishing to catch fish, not to piss around with like, working out how to cast a stupid reel that won't do it what I'm telling it to do. You see, that's interesting because when I'm on the big waters, like the resis on boats and things, you can't mess about. No, because you're trying to catch big fish, yeah. and you need, you, you, you know. So I use small reels, like two thousands, two even one thousand, mm-hmm. different drop shot. But two thousands, two 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 thousand five hundred things. Like yeah, that. bloody brilliant, and it, it solves that problem. But I'm now getting to the point where I'm I, I'm really sad. I spend a lot of time watching YouTube, mm-hmm. as you lot should do watching us. Yeah. Anyway, that's beside the point. I was joking, and I watch things like Scott Scott Martin fishing, yeah. and I love watching him bass fishing on these tournaments yeah i like the whole build up to when they get the house blah blah but anyway the thing that has got me is they use these dc reels and they are chucking out cranks into the yeah. wind a long way yeah now i know the camera angle can uh skew it so it's not as far as you think mm-hmm. however i'm now thinking right 
bass fishing is so much more advanced than the fishing is over here. Mm -hmm. There are elements that you need to transfer mm -hmm. because you've got to be thinking all the time. So, um, talk about resi fishing, I'm thinking I now need a setup that's going to overcome some of the issues that I've found with pressurised fish. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly what these things are. This is going against what we spoke about in the first <laughs> podcast because I do a bit of competition fishing. There's a few things that I think I've noticed that I'm keep. Well, what, Certain things have to stay guarded. Well, no, but I'm problem yeah. solving. The, the point I'm trying to make is I'm problem solving. So, I think the next step is I need to try and find a setup that I can cast a nice distance on big waters where the wind isn't bothering me. I can ping it into the wind, whatever. Yeah. But I'm not bothered about overruns because, like I said, I can't spend two minutes picking out a line. I'm in a comp. It's, that rod will go straight down. And I'll never pick it up again. Yeah. Because it'd be a waste of time. Yeah. So I think this is all where this is what I love about this is one of the things I love about lure fishing is that it promotes this learning. Mm -hmm. you, you you get a problem, and like you said, you can't be asked with it. Mm -hmm. You just want to go fishing. Mm -hmm. I have a slightly different mindset. I'm thinking, hmm, I know Scott Martin, all those bass anglers have been lure fishing since the age of whatever, and their yeah. families have been fishing, and his dad's are famous. They have forgotten more about lure fishing than we'll ever know. Yeah. So I like to think that you can always learn. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, I want to get a setup now for the resis, baitcaster, that meets that in-between bit. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. That I can then play with and see if that helps me in certain situations mm -hmm. so going back to your trout fishing setup you're saying you use a fixed ball uh what, what a very light yeah like, like a 500 ball. size uh that was a shimano vanford they, they look, they back wind yeah the, i was amazed when i picked up a 500 yeah. it had a back wind facility yeah the thousands and above don't yeah i've got a four thousand, which is a lovely reel yeah. i hardly use it because it's my medium pike fishing yeah, setup, yeah 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 where i'm kind of getting straight into the bait so mm -hmm. but the odd occasion i use it, it's, it's it's great. I've got this little diamond rod. It's bloody brilliant. But yeah, so the, the 500 back winds as well. It's a lovely little right mm -hmm. reel. And what, what sort of rod would you use? So I'm, I'm actually considering changing up rods. At the moment, I'm using, I've got an LMAB La Moustique. Um, oh, La Moustique. La Moustique, yeah. Uh, if, mosquito. Yeah. Uh, which is what I use. It's actually what I, is my canal wasping rod, is the honest truth. And not even my canal wasping rod, it's my canal dibbling rod. For those of you who don't know who dibbling, don't know what dibbling is, it's when you're fishing down the edge essentially, and you're fishing with, with little tiny, you know, jig heads with with little shads on and things like that, and it's like you're holding it almost like a pencil. Which you do it. So that's 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 what I use that for. But I do use it for casting as well. But it sort you, of translates. You down the edge. You, mate, you'd be surprised how many fish are under your feet on these canals. Yeah. And and I know it's it's very cliche now to say that, but it, it is true, like you know. You, there's people that are very good at it and I know a few people that are very very and that's how stupid being good at that because it seems simple but I'm not very good at it Cause, and the reason why is I haven't got the patience for it do you know what I was about to say Go I on. couldn't stand doing that sort of thing yeah because I'm not casting yeah isn't that weird I know yeah I can see I'm missing out <coughs> yeah so but I've, because I'm doing more and more of these competitions I force myself you have it's part of that competition fishing you have to be reasonably good at that to be able to partake properly um so that's my setup. Yeah. yeah. So that's so that's my setup. Use that, and that just translates for for my trout fishing as well, because yeah. it's um, it's relatively fast action. So it's nice for pinging, which is what I call you know like under trees, under the overhangs. It's not, um, but it's not really stiff. So you've got so the, the, you've got a little bit of giving the rod for the fish because trout jump and shake and yeah. do all sorts of horrible things. And they're quite good at throwing the lures, whereas that rod absorbs a lot of that so i do like it for that sort of fishing yeah and it's even good for trout area fishing which is a whole different thing oh this is something we were talking about in the pub wasn't it mm. a few weeks ago whereby it's a is that where it's a, it's a comp and you change positions yeah so you sort of rotate so it's um it's a, i don't know if it originated in japan or originated in europe it's very popular in italy um and it's sort of making its way around europe now um it's not everyone's cup of tea, and I sort of don't understand nice why. Tomas was talking to me about it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Tomas, he's um, he knows a lot about. It. He's probably the, the man I would. If I need to know anything about trout area, one of my cousins. No, so no. He's a Scottish Italian. He's a Scottish Italian as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I, it's it's very, it's purely competition fishing. It's not the sort of fishing you would go and do really, mate, because it's it's quite 
it's very regimented. You know, you have so the, the essence of it is you have forty five minutes in in your peg or whatever the time is. Usually it's forty five minutes, and then you rotate down. So sometimes you just move them to the next peg. Sometimes you move three pegs down, and everyone does the same. So you all end up rotating around. So you all, and by the end of the competition, you all end up fishing the same amount of water. So nobody's got the hot peg. And these are trout. These are trout. And these, do these trout go back? Yes. So the, the whole concept of trout area is it's catch and release only. There's no way in. That's right. Yeah. You don't, to- you, you don't, have to touch you don't even touch the fish. The fish goes into the net. The fish never leaves the water. It's bar- all barbless hooks under a certain size. So no big giant trebles or anything like that. The fish goes in the net. You unhook it. The person to your left or right or maybe a, a, a marshal would recognise the fish has been caught. The fish goes back. Hmm. So, and it's quite it's quite new to the UK. And there's actually not a lot of places that do it or would even allow doing it. Myself and Dave from Predator Tackle, we put one on um Christ pretty kind of a couple of years ago now on uh, a small little steel water trout fishery near me and it was brilliant absolutely fantastic great day and it wasn't fishing wasn't fantastic but we had I think we had 30 people turn up 28 29 30 yeah, people yeah I imagine the social side being quite cool it's brilliant yeah. because you're, just, you're not hiding you can, you can see everyone you can literally see everyone in the competition <laughs> the so quite you could see matey down there Oh, he's got fish. And you see him half an hour later, he's in the next peg. Oh, he's got another fish. What's he doing that I ain't doing? You try and... He's got a lobworm on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, the lures they use, you look at them and you think, there's no chance of catching on that. They use these like weird little like ribbed things and they got they don't look like those hair on them and I think they're little grubs so they're sort of like, almost like like sausage shaped but ribbed. And they put them on super light barbless jig heads and they cast them and sometimes they just rip them across the surface really quick. Yeah, they get reactions. Yeah. yeah. But it's and, and obviously then it comes into spoons and all sorts of things like that. Yeah. But it's interesting, it's very interesting. Mm. But yeah, so that's what I'm saying. That rod's very versatile. I can yeah. use it for what, a lot of things. Uh, are you using braid straight through or using a fluorocarbon leader? Fluorocarbon leader, yeah. So what braid straight for diameter, I should say? Um good question. I don't know what it is. Thin. P- point something, point one four is it? There's just the really thin stuff. No, you're using thinner than that, mate. No, oh, whatever it is, yeah. I'm not good with those numbers. I, it, it's about eight pounds. Oh god, you'll be using as- Point zero six. No, yeah, there you go. Sort of that. Yeah. Point zero four. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's probably what I meant. Point zero yeah. four, probably yeah. point one four. Yeah. Point zero four, I think. Yeah. So, so it's yeah, it's tiny, tiny stuff. Yeah. Um, and just because it, it it's um, you're fishing with such light gear, fishing with it heavier than that, you, you get the full rates all full, right? Um, and you're using tiny reels as well, so you wouldn't get anything on it <laughs> if you're <laughs> yeah. using anything thicker. Yeah. Um, well, that's that, I, that trout area doesn't, doesn't doesn't float my boat. No. I am. I, what I would like to do is wander down. Running, running water. Wading. It's got that sound. Yeah. And that feel against your legs. So yeah. that sounds a bit. But, but it's nice. I don't mean, yeah. yeah. And that's, so I think I'm going to. I'm going to give this trout fishing a go. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go bass fishing. Maybe we should go trout fishing. But the twins are going to take the trout fishing. Well, the twins have promised me trout fishing as well. So maybe we'll, we'll go, go together. Yeah. 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 We'll drink them dry. Yeah. So they're too young. No. They'll die. No. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure they're baby after. <laughs> um, okay, that's cool. Um, so the. We can actually then use the rods we've got for different types of fishing because yep. we don't need new gear. No, this is it. Which is which is another nice thing about when you're getting into different aspects of lure fishing, you don't need to go and buy new gear. You don't need to. Doesn't mean you don't. When you get into it, I am awful. Yeah, you end up. I it. am awful. And now, I'm gonna. This is my dirty little secret. Do you want to hear my dirty little secret? Oh, I thought I heard it last no, time. No, no. This oh, is much. God, this is much dirtier. How many... I can't sit any further this way. <laughs> <laughs> Not lure rods, but how many rods do you think I own? I know you used to cartfish as well and still yeah. dabble. 40. 250 rods. Good God. I own 250 rods. It's dead true. And, and so here's, a, here's the, the thought behind it. So over my time of angling, I've done sea fishing, beach and boat. Oh yeah, have, and, and, yeah. And pier. Did a lot of sea fishing. Um, I've done fly fishing in all its forms from little tiny six foot two weight glass rods up to you know nine foot reservoir setups pike pike fly stuff all the way and anything in between so i've got about 15 fly rods maybe more uh then you've got all my lure stuff which i've got far more rods than i ever will use because i've got everything from canal wasping up to big jerk bait stuff and everything in between They've got my saltwater gear, so I've got my bass rods, which I've got different rods for different things. Yeah. So I've got my my soft plastic rods, I've got my top water rods, and then I've got my ras fishing rods, which are different to my bass rods because they've got to be a little bit more backbone, a bit shorter. And then I've got my squid fishing rods, 
And I've got a couple of them because of different situations. One fishing for peers. Needs to be a bit longer. So anyone getting into lure fishing, don't listen to Charlie. No. You'll be skinned. You, you'll be broke, yeah. You haven't gone into reels. No. So, so then, there's all that. And then I've got all my course fishing stuff. So I've got my river rods. So my, my bait fishing course, like course rods. I've got my, you know, my barbel rods, my chub rods, my float rods. And I've got my commercial stuff. And I've got my carp gear. And I've got my bait predator stuff. I love eel fishing. Catfish. Pike. Perch. Sander. It, it goes on and on and on. So, my, and you know, even within my pipe fishing, I've got three different pipe bait setups. So I've got one for the boat, I've got one for bank, I've got one for drifter fishing. It all, you know, and I've got two of each. So that's how it very, very quickly adds up. I remember when I was a kid, right? So I had this long, I've got this orange thing rod. You know, yellow, about six foot long, with a mm-hmm. plastic reel hand, a reel yep. fitting, with some real awful uh, reel, yep. big pipe bomb. And I was desperate to go. I must be about 10. Mm-hmm. And I remember Christmas time. I was sitting in the front room. Christmas tree there. I'm sitting on the sofa with my rod over the end with a bug on the floor. Just imagining I'm on the bank. Yeah. Desperate to go. Yeah. And I used that rod for the next four years. Because we just just had to make do, didn't you? Brilliant. But yeah, I had all the wrong gear. And as a kid, learning how to fish for different species... You just use what you got. This is a genuine. Like, from from this we point, used to take the end section of a match rod off. Yeah. And just use the first two sections. Yeah, of yeah. fishing. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, this is this is a genuine truth. I, you know, from both ends of the spectrum, from now having two hundred and fifty rods, to when I was younger, I remember this very very vividly. There was a little brook that ran through a set of woods at the end of my road. There wasn't a single fish living in it. I know that for a fact now. I used to build fishing rods regularly. To go down and fish for them. Yeah. Everything, for whatever I can get my hands on, from a, a bit of bamboo with a bit of, bit of string tied to the end, to, and I remember doing this, I remember spending a whole day doing this as a child, and I'm sure my mum will remember it because she must have laughed at the time. There was a broom handle that my mum had broken, and just, like the head had broken off, and it was sitting in the back garden for weeks and months. I pinched all the curtain eye, you know, that little, the little drilling eyes you put on your, your wires for your curtains, pinched all them and put them all up the thing. Like there were eyes and a rod. Brilliant. And a broomstick <laughs> to go and fish in a brook that was about six inches deep. <laughs> but it didn't matter. I, I had a brilliant time. You I had a brilliant time. I, mean, I remember it vividly, so I must have enjoyed it. And that's what I want to get out tra- this trout fishing. I yeah. want to go, yeah, not yeah. knowing anything, yeah. running water, exploring. I don't care. It doesn't matter catch, I think. No. It's just being somewhere completely different. Yeah. So in my head, I always want to catch a really big river pike. Yeah. Because I mean, proper flowing river like, I don't know, 7Y, something like that. But um, because it's, it's just being there, mm. and I think that's part of the magic of all angling, isn't it? It's yeah. just being in these different places. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. It's the whole um kin- kinesthetics of it all. You're feeling everything. Mm-hmm. You this, mor- this morning there was an ice outside. I know. Yeah. A lovely crisp morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, whew, a frosty night. Yeah. 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 But now we're in, f- in the full springs, the full swings of spring. You, you go, oh, I'd like to be fishing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely and bright sunny outside. Yeah. yeah. And then there's. Us like who go to death and have all this gear, and sometimes you can get lost in that, can't you? The thing is, it's hard because there's so much. There's so much in the way of options nowadays. You, like, for, I imagine for people getting into to lure angling, it's very daunting because where the hell do you start? Yeah. Like, and actually, it's going to segue quite nicely into what I'm going to talk about in a second. But yeah. um, that's seamless. It was seamless. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like uh, that's, that's my middle name, you know, seamless. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, um, my what the point is is it's actually very daunting because I, I, as we were having a conversation this morning, I had a guy who I've known through my work tattooing, and he is a carp angler. He's been abroad on holiday and caught some sea fish on lures. He's like, sold, want to do it? When can I go? What, what do I need? And he's like, I'm gonna buy a rod today. I was like, right, okay. Well, what do you want to fish for? I don't know anything. Just fish. I want to catch fish? So like, okay, well. You know, we're in a time of year where the rivers are closed. There's no lure fishing to be done on the uh, for trout near us. There's no canals in Essex. So you've got the choice of still waters that allow you to lure fish, and there isn't many around our way. Or, uh, that was the ghost, knock his hang over. Um, oh, about time it appeared. Uh, or salt water. And it's still a little bit early, for, you know, but it's getting that way for, for bass. Yeah. So I was like, okay, but bass is probably the best bet. And then I said, I said to him, this is what you're going to need. Oh, great. Well, I can use it for perch as well, can't I? No. Why? Well, because it won't work. And then he started getting into it, and he's like, well, what do I need then? I was like, well, Christ. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Where'd you start and where'd you stop? Like, yeah, it is confusing, isn't it? And uh, 
there's so many abbreviations mm. that I I have no interest in the abbreviations. Mm-hmm. So when people talk about stuff, I go, I don't know what you're on about, mate. Yeah. What is it? What are you on about? Like you said about LF. Um, LRF, yeah. like rock fishing. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I know yeah. But yeah, it is a minefield. Um, yeah. I'm conscious of the time, Charlie, as well. well how long have we been going? Well, ages already. Have we? What's the time, buddy? We've got other things to do, haven't we? It so is. Quarter past twelve. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. Just checking. Yeah. We've, um, got we'll, 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 we'll run through... People to go and see. Yes, we have, yeah. yeah. Um, we need to mention... Yeah, this. so like I was saying, segueing, um, it is difficult for new guys getting into yeah. lure fishing knowing what to pick. So... A little side side hustle that I run. Pass me that. Is this? This is brilliant. I'll be the the model. Now so, we said we weren't going to plug this. No. So we're going to be shamelessly. We are going to plug this. Yeah, yeah. This is a bloody brilliant idea. Oh, I'm proud of it, mate. You know, yeah, I, I am proud of it. It's it's something. It's not. Don't get me wrong. I didn't invent the concept. It was. A, it. I, I have very very openly said that I've taken inspiration from these companies that do similar sort of things, especially in the states. Like mystery tackle box. Yeah, like mystery tackle box and the likes of that. I think they do a brilliant thing. So I was like, well, why? Because I again. So it was. It, the drama just came out. It was at the start of lockdown. I was sitting at home. The first lockdown. I was like. God, I'd like to buy some lures, but I know I sort of know what I want to buy. So I'd love someone to send me a little mystery box of of goodies. There's no one doing it in the UK. There was a company that did it a little while ago, and they sort of it went under. So I was like, oh, bloody hell, I'll, I'll create it then myself. I'm going to tease you a little bit. Yeah. Because I've just seen what's in here. So this this is the per, one of our perch boxes. What, what type of boxes do you do? Everything. So my concept. So originally, when I first started, we had three boxes. We had our bronze, our silver, and our gold, and that was purely so there was different values, and it offered something for everybody's budget. Now I don't know how many different skews we've got, but we've got our bronze, silver, gold. We've added a platinum for those that really want to go big baller. We've got big baller. Our whole species boxes. So we've got perch, pike, zander, trout. So if you want to get a trout fish, you don't know what you want. We need a oh, trout box. That's a, maybe we should do that. Yeah. Um, if I get a trout box off you, buy a trout box off you, we'll take it fishing. Yes. Tra- yeah, that. What a good idea. Yeah. And we've got bass boxes, we've got a rass box, we've got you know, everything in between. We're adding another species box very soon, which I can't talk about yet because it's a secret. Um, then we've got the, the brand boxes. So if you're a big fan of, say, Z Man, get yourself a Z Man box. Well, that's a good idea. You can always see Or. If you like, oh, I quite like the idea of what's going on with Guggen baits, but I don't really know anything about them. I don't know what I should order. I'll order a Guggen box, and Charlie will pick a box of all the best Guggen bits, send them out to you, and you get a little sample of everything. Now the important bit. Yeah. How much do they cost? So they start at fifteen pounds, which is a bronze box. Is that including postage? No, the postage on top. Yeah. Um, then they go upwards from there. So the silver box is thirty pound. Uh, the for the brand boxes are thirty pound. We used to do uh, rig boxes. So if you're looking to investigate a new rig that you're not t- entirely comfortable with, like say like Texas rig, a lot of people don't really fish Texas rigs. So they get intimidated by it. Order a Texas rig box. There'll be a little selection of different bits that are good for Texas rigs, and it might be two different types of hooks. So you find one you like, or two different types of baits. I've had it right. I did some rig setups with BFS. Yes. Texas Cheb, whatever. Yeah. That. That would link well into the with boxes. Yeah. People don't know what to do. This there's, there's a wealth. I'm not saying just use my videos. There's, there's so many brilliant yeah. videos out. There. Yeah. So what people could do is just um. Well, what we'll do. Obviously, we'll put this on the description at the yeah, end. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll link in some of the videos as well. Yeah. Because that'd be quite handy. Um. Just, not saying mine are very good. There are loads out there. Mm-hmm. There's some really good videos on how to yeah, yeah. different box, uh, different rigging. So if you don't know about Tesla's rig. Yep. Get yourself a box, go on YouTube, see it. Yeah. So we've also on our on the Hook Me Up YouTube, there's a few little instructional videos. Oh well even better, we'll use those instead. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we'll use those uh, like how to tie how to yeah. even even really simple things like how to put a shad in a jig head. Yeah. Uh, it sounds for me so likes me and you've been lure fishing a little while, it sounds like it's overly simple. No, I promise right. you how many people come to me and say, which way around does it go? Or What's the way to mark up to get it on the jig head but correct? Also, depending on what type of shad it is and yeah. what plastic it is. Oh, there's so many different variations. You, can, you get a kink in it sometimes. Yeah. Not, it, it is frustrating. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So you've got one a knacker, your nice new plastic. Exactly, by putting a million holes in it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so we've got the £30 boxes, which are like the, the rig boxes, the, the, the brand boxes, and the silver box. Then we go up to the gold box, which is £50, and, that, and the, the species boxes are all £50 as well. So. You know, you've got your pipe box and the, the bass box and the Xander box, etc. Yeah. And then our top of the tier, right at the top of the tree, is, is the diamond box, which is £80. So 
that for me in my mind was for two different types of people it's for those who are really into lure fishing and want to sample the finest of finest because yeah. obviously when, with a 30 pound box you can't i can't put a 20 quid lure in there because no. someone will end up with two lures in the box and they go well bloody hell there's yeah. nothing in there yeah. so if you want those really premium stuff then the diamond box one yeah. or if you're really really new to it and want a large selection of different things then the diamond box is perfect you get loads of stuff to play with I, I, so I'm thinking of birthday presents Christmas birthday presents day. father's day you know anniversaries the amount of um partners of, of anglers I have phoned me because that's the other thing so if you phone if you want to hook me up with something you phone that number you speak to me yeah you don't speak to anyone else it's me like everything and the people and don't get me wrong I like to project an idea of, of professionalism and it's true I'd like to be professional but everything that's done pretty much we've hooked me up aside from some of my social media one of my, my guys does some of my social media it's me yeah. I pick the lures I box them I post them I do everything uh, yeah. I answer your emails I answer the phone People phone me up, they say, my husband or my wife is into fishing, I don't know anything about it. Oh, I know they catch perch. Well, there you go, I've got a perch box for them. Yeah. Because that, that to me is like, people always say, what do you do after this? But that's, that's brilliant. Now, so this is the perch box. Yes. That's 50 quid. It's 50 quid. Mate, there's a lot in it. Right, I'm going to, so I've got, a, there's, a, there's a Fox Rage floating creatures. There's Guggen baits here, they're rattling nets. Um... Drop shot hooks, Texas weights. You gotta remember, tungsten weights are really expensive yep. as well. Uh, we got some small little jigs there. Got a football jig. More blood tees. Blood tees. Really, these are really good. Mm -hmm. Salmo cranks, and we got some more tungsten weights. Yeah. So I know alone that's well over fifty quid. So, so what I what I do is um, that is well over fifty quid. Yeah. I, every every box. If it costs you fifty quid, it, you, you, there's a saving on the RRP. So you're getting always going to get more than fifty quid's worth in your box. Okay. Easily more than fifty pounds in there. You can also save yourself another ten percent by subscribing. So if, almost every box. Some of them not because I feel like there's not enough to do it every month. So like the trout box is probably not enough variation to have that once a month all year. Yeah. But the rest of the boxes and maybe a couple of us buy that. You can have it on a subscription. So I can't remember if it's five percent or ten percent. I should know that really. Go and have a look. Go and have a look. Yeah. You save yourself more. If you subscribe to, subscribe to a subscription, subscribe to a subscription, something like that. Okay. Sign up to a subscription. Yeah. You save yourself more money. That There's no, um, what's the word? You're not signing for any amount of time. If you want to do it for a month and, and cancel it, you can. I, I, it shocks me all the time that I get any orders that aren't subscriptions because I think if it was me, I'd order the subscription and then just cancel it. <laughs> but people uh, but people don't they all the one offs so what I'm saying is you can save yourself money you can get a nice little park package of lures every, every month and the other thing is because we're I, it's, I'm doing it every month I'm in touch with the newest gear that's coming out a lot of these boxes in the past have been old stock stuff that's been sitting on the shelves you know from these previous companies that tried it they just want to get rid of stuff of course yeah I'm not like I don't do it like that You a lot of the times you get stuff in these boxes before they've even hit the shelves of the shops and that's dead true um, I forget what I put inside. The other. There was there was a, a new colour of of Kytec Easy Shine or something, and it was in the boxes a week before anyone else in the country had them. Yeah, I think this is a brilliant idea, and you do it the right way because Charlie will hate me for saying this, but he, the amount of money he makes off this is minimal. Mm -hmm. He's just trying to get it off the ground so everyone has a good product. Yep. And that's basically what it happens. is, and, I, and like I said, what I'm trying to do is, is, is what we said before, which is why we're doing this really, is, yeah. is to sort of grow lure fishing. Yeah. Um, and it's, and like I said, shamelessly, I take I take uh, inspiration from the states and see how they do it, and and they're doing it. They're, 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 they're better at it. They're, they're better at yeah, us. Are. So that's where this came from. This is a really good idea. So yeah. uh, obviously, put a link in the description to this. Yeah. I'm going to buy a trout one off you, and I'm going to try or video it. That'll be that's what we yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not trying to sell anything, just it just links into everything, yeah. And these things flow, they, things mm -hmm. happen, and we do it. Yeah, that, that'd be really good. So, ladies and gents, have a look at this. And this is what I th I think it'd be worth challenging yourselves and getting one a month and just trying the different species. I'd love to get to, trout. Worm. One one of my my favorite my, the, the the biggest uh, gratifications I get from doing these things is when people call me up and they go, I caught an all every single lure in that box this month. I got you. I got your silver box. I challenged myself out, and over a week, I went out, and every single item in that box, I caught a fish on. Yeah. 
Because also, Brilliant. if you look at this one, you've got to tie different rigs, yep. different knots. Yep. You ha if you're not au okay fait with what you're doing, you've got to learn, 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 learn. So what I also try to do is I try to include stuff that I think will challenge people. Yeah. So like the, the, the jigs, football jigs. How many people do you know that use football jigs religiously for perch? Not many no. in the UK. We should be. Yeah. You know, and there's, there's certain situations where they're absolutely deadly. Um, so I include things like that to go, oh, do you know what? I, usually I stick to my usual one, I fish a Texas rig or a chair, but it'll save stuff. Yeah. Test yourself, push your limits, learn new things, you know. Yeah. That's what this, for me, being someone who's, who knows a, a little bit about lure fishing, has done it for a little while, this is what I, how I read this sort of thing. For those sort of people, you can test, discover yeah. new things, you yeah. know. No, you've got the right idea, it's fantastic, it's mm -hmm. a really, really good idea. Talking of lures, yep. guys, don't forget to send us your lures yes. and stuff that you want us to show on here. So um, I'll explain how it's going to happen again. To try and keep this neutral, um, we don't want it sent to a lure fishing tackle shop. So my mate Alex, who's a match fishing tackle shop, tackle and baits, is at Piddly. We can, he's quite happy for you guys to send all your um, lures and bits and bobs there, and he'll collect it for me, and we'll pick it up, and then we'll start to show it on the podcast. So I should put a link again in the description of his address so where you can send stuff to. Mm -hmm. Charlie, this is a lovely idea. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, we haven't mentioned the UK lure meet. Do you know what? I think I've got a new favourite on there. Actually, I think I screenshotted it too, Six. I I love it. Like I I am a bit of a uh, a sucker for memes, a bit of a meme head. Like, do you know what I mean? And I saw one. I was scrolling back through some the other day, and it actually featured one of our friends. Which one? One of the Lloyds. Did it? Oh. <laughs> They've actually covered his head face. So I'm not sure which Lloyd it is. Got the finger up the bum. Finger up the bum. I hadn't yeah. seen it. <laughs> and what we'll do is, I think we'll cut and put a little. Screenshot of it here so people can see what we're seeing. Well, I think we should, we should use it as a thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm, 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 I am I'm, said it before, I'm still gutted I haven't been on there. Or, or like actually featured. I said, I'm too old and grumpy. Yeah. yeah I feel like... You're too nice. I, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about that. But, <laughs> finger up the bum. Yeah. Yeah. But I think... That's, that's a thumbnail, so it. <laughs> yeah. Finger up the bum. Yeah. Brilliant. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> was it Rob or was it Sam? Oh, was it Sam? I don't know. Oh, I'm confused. I don't know. I just, I just seen a photo. I, I remember one of them having the Mickey taken oh, out. Sure of him, it, but it could have been Rob. I'm, yeah. I'm going to nail my colours to the mic. I, when I was, I was. So another thing I do that people may not know is I do a little bit of video editing for uh, Predator Tackle. So I do some filming and video editing, and I was editing the video the other day, and one of the twins was in it, and I was like, I can't remember which one it is. So I had to had to message them and say, can I just confirm <laughs> which one of you this is in this video before I actually put the titles in? And uh, luckily I got it right. I, I guessed it and I got it right. So. I haven't known them for very long, but aren't they lovely? No, oh, brilliant. Yeah. Mate, honestly, some of the most positive and enthusiastic mm -hmm. lure anglers I've ever come across. Like, yeah. they, they have got a passion that yeah. burns like it does burn they're, they're so in, they, they, they infuse you talking to them because they, they're so up for it all the time they want to fish 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 they love it they're brilliant they are aren't they yeah. and there's a lot of bloody people in the sport all yes sport. mate can you just do a time check because I'm a bit worried that we might have to, we've got a... it is 25 past we've got to go for the club yeah that's a good place it's to start. It's very difficult recording these things. Yeah. We need to go and have lunch in the pub. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Yes. Thank you. Again, brilliant. Thank this you. a really good idea. Yeah. I, I don't know how long this podcast has been. I reckon it's been nearly an hour, this one. Do you think? We, yeah. We, I've totally lost track of time. We had an idea that we we're going to keep these short things short and snappy, but it never plans out. No, so we both waffle. So if you're still watching to the bitter end, thank you very much. Uh, this is our second attempt, so give us some feedback. Mm -hmm. What you like. We're just going to keep going on regardless. Yep. Because... Uh, my mum liked it and your mum liked it, so it was all right. We got we had two views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least two views. Yeah, yeah. so no, I think it's good. Mate. I'm enjoying myself. I, I I'll talk about lure fishing until the cows come home. So that's what it's all about. Isn't yeah. It? yeah, but I think as long as people, yeah, again, if we're doing anything people want to see more of, or you want to see less of, let us know. Yeah, I think that's important. Uh, we haven't quite got the camera angles right, but on this table down here, I've still got all these lures that I'm amassing and hats and things. So we will, when we get round to it, think of some little. Um, do you know what I think we should do? I think we should um, give a shout out to the best comments, and whoever, and whoever gives those gives us the best comments, we can send them a pack of those. Yeah, we're not going to do it just yet. No, because we have other plans in the yes. in the ether. Yeah, but it 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 was relying on other people. Yeah. So in a few episodes of time, I think we'll be in a position to. Start. How mysterious you are! I love your mystique. It's 
Yeah, because this, this bit's out of my control. I know. <laughs> I know. And if people don't turn he, up... He, he, makes, he makes it sound like it's people, all very, like... If people don't turn up, we're screwed. Yeah, exactly. So we have to, we have to do things yeah, on the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right, I've given it away. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think you'll, you'll see yeah. what's going to happen. I think that's the best way to live it. You'll, you'll see. see. Hopefully, you'll see. if plans come to fruition, yeah. you'll see what happens. Yeah. Should, should we, on that note, should we leave it there? I'm done. You done? Yeah. I'm done. Thank you for watching. See you guys. See you next episode.